now, broadcasting from behind enemy lines, deep in the trenches of the Patriot resistance, leading the charge in the battle for liberty, this is the Jason Feely Program. Hello folks, Jason Veely here. You're listening to the Jason Veely Program. The email address, if you want to get in touch with me, the Jason Veely Program at gmail.com or give us a call and leave a message, 860-266-2852. I apologize for uh, not being able to do a normal show uh, yesterday, Wednesday. Um, I was all set to go. I had a whole show planned and then something uh, important came up at the last minute. Um, and I had to deal with that, and I was on 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 the phone talking to different people for a couple hours, and it just didn't work out yesterday. But um, fortunately, I was able to put together a best of Jason Veely episode. Um, so uh, check that out if if you have anyone that uh, has you know any friends or family members who have never listened to the show before. Um, yesterday's show again, the best of Jason Veely episode is a great first episode for them to listen to and, and see if they like my, my style, my my aggressive, loud-natured <laughs> radio style. Check that out. I think you'll like it. But again, I apologize for that, um, but here I am for a normal episode uh, Thursday the, uh, the 15th. Folks, we have to talk about what's going on in Minneapolis. I have a lot to get to tonight. I want to spend a good amount of time talking about what's going on in Minneapolis, the response to it, um, you know, from different uh, activist groups and pundits in the media. And then later on in the program, I got to get to something else that I feel is very, very important regarding the Supreme Court. So stay tuned for that. But let's look at Minneapolis. You know, whenever something like this happens, I try to distance myself from all the rhetoric, all the drama, all the emotion, and just solely look at the facts. So let's look at the facts, shall we? Here's what happened. You had a 20-year-old black male by the name of Dante Wright who was pulled over in Minneapolis on April 11th. It was just a normal traffic stop because he had had expired license tags. Um, Come to find out that he had a warrant for his arrest. So the police officers went to arrest him, uh, and he resisted. And one of the officers, Kim Potter, uh, who, as far as I understand, has been on the force for something like 26 years. She's a veteran. Um, She tried to grab her taser uh, because, again, Dante Wright was resisting arrest and instead, unfortunately, grabbed her firearm, thinking it was her taser, discharged it, and killed him. Now, of course, this is a tragedy. This is horrible. This never should have happened, especially for, uh, especially given the circumstances. I'm not justifying what Dante Wright did. He shouldn't have been resisting arrest. But at the same time, I think this officer, especially someone who is on the force for 26 years, should have been able to tell the difference between a taser and a firearm. Um, as far as I understand, I, I believe there was footage, body body cam footage, um, that showed Kim Potter yelling, taser, taser, taser. Um, so she's not lying when she says that she did indeed intend to draw her taser. Uh, I believe that she intended to draw her taser, but uh, again, she drew her firearm, fired it, and killed Dante Wright. It's horrible. It's horrible, and I do think she needs to be held accountable here. Um, I absolutely do. I believe she did this accidentally. I don't think it was an act of racism, um, but uh, but it still happened. It still happened. It, it was it was her mistake. She needs to own it, and she uh, is being charged with uh, with manslaughter. So that's what happened, ladies and gentlemen. Now let's look at Dante Wright a little bit closer. Who is this guy? Because again, we're just looking at the facts for now, and then we'll dive into. Uh, you know, the, the more, uh, you know, reacting to what's going on in the media and and uh, what what the left are saying about this whole thing. Um, according to Breitbart, Dante Wright had a warrant for attempted aggravated robbery. So let's get all the facts out on the table. 
Wright to begin with. Dante Wright allegedly had a warrant out for his arrest at the time he was shot and killed by a Brooklyn Center police officer near Minneapolis, Minnesota on Sunday, court papers obtained by the British Daily Mail newspaper suggest. Wright was due to face trial on a charge of attempted aggravated robbery with a possible maximum sentence of 20 years in prison, the newspaper reported on April 13th. The charge stems from an incident on Dece- in December 2019 when Wright, then 19 years old, and a second man named Emma J. Driver, then 18 years old, allegedly visited a residence shared by two women in Oseo, Minnesota. Wright allegedly tried to hold up one of the women to steal a sum of $820 in cash she had stashed inside her bra. Wright allegedly pointed a gun at the woman, choked her, and threatened to shoot her if she did not hand over the money. The $820 cash was tucked in the victim's bra, and defendant Wright placed his hand around the victim's neck and choked her while trying to pull the cash from under her bra, according to Officer McKelson. Victim was able to get loose from defendant Wright, and started to kneel down and scream. After more yelling, Wright allegedly told the woman that he was going to shoot her unless he got the money, according to the Daily Mail. So he's been charged, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, He had a warrant for attempted aggravated robbery. So let's not pretend that this guy was, you know, some kind of saint. He wasn't. He was a criminal. He died a criminal. He, he absolutely did. This this was not a nice guy. Holding up a, a woman at gunpoint, saying he's going to kill her unless he gets $820 that's stuffed in her bra. That's not a good dude. That That's a criminal. Okay, so let's set the record straight about that. Now, let's get on to how the liberals are responding to this whole thing. It doesn't exactly take a rocket scientist or a political junkie or a political scientist to understand that the liberals are going to react now as they always have in the past. That is, the police are racist, we need to abolish the police, we need to uh, restructure the police force, Um, bad police, bad police, bad police. Right? That's the narrative. Oh, and some arguments about, of course, white supremacy and, and, and all the rest, but... Let's get on to some audio clips. Um, we, we have a few to get to get to here. Uh, first from CNN's Van Jones. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Van Jones, for those of you who don't know, um, right now he's a commentator on CNN, but this guy has an extremely radical past. He was a self-described communist. Look up, you know what, if you guys have uh, have a minute today, look up Van Jones... STORM, S-T-O-R-M, all in caps. It was an organization that he was a part of or started um, that was rooted in communism, completely rooted in communism. He's a self-described communist, uh, and he was Obama's green job czar. Um, Very, very radical past, and now he sits uh, in a newsroom at CNN commentating over this kind of stuff. But here's what Van Jones had to say about what happened between Kim Potter and Dante Wright. Take a listen. Here's cut one. The reason those young people are out there and those folks are out there tonight is because people are now just... Now they're talking about the rioting. We'll get to that after the commercial break. All the rioting, uh, rioting that's taking place right now in, in Minnesota and other parts of the country. Cities are burning. Again, looting, businesses being destroyed, cars being flipped, things set on fire, bricks being thrown at cops... And here we have Van Jones, who's going to try to justify all that. Again, listen. The reason those young people are out there and those yes, folks are out us, there tonight man. is because people are just losing faith in the system. And the reason that that young man, people keep saying, well, why didn't the young man just do what he was told? Why didn't Dante Wright just do what he was told? Please understand, there are two different Americas here. If when you see a police no, officer... No, I'm going to stop. There's nothing to understand. There's nothing to understand. He's going to try to justify. I'm going to keep playing the audio clip in a minute, but he's going to try to justify the fact that Dante Wright resisted arrest. There's no justification for that. 
There's no justification for that. A police officer pulls you over. It's yes, sir, no, sir, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. You put your hands on the steering wheel and do what you're told. That's it. That's it. It's very simple. Anyone can do this. Doesn't matter if you're white, black, brown, yellow, purple. Anyone can do this. That's what we should we should be teaching all Americans, particularly our, our young people. Respect the police. Do what they say, and you won't have any trouble. But go on, Van Jones. Keep uh, trying to justify this. You see the badge and not all those weapons? You're in one part of America. If when you, are, uh, when you see a police officer, you see all those weapons and don't even see the badge, it's because your experience has been they don't come at you with respect, they don't come at you with trust, they come at you with force. And when people see somebody that, coming... That is such a broad statement. It's, it's outrageous. The fact that CNN lets him just sit there in their newsroom spewing this stuff. It's because you have been mistreated by the police. That's why people resist arrest. It's because you're scared. Well, you're, you, what, are you going to speak for the entire police force now? You have no idea the details of the interactions that Dante Wright had previously had with the police. You know nothing about that. For all you know, Van Jones, the police in the past could have treated Dante Wright with nothing but respect. 99.9%, I guarantee you, of all cops in this country, treat people with respect. If they do what they're told. If they comply. If you don't, that's a different story. But then liberals will come out and blame the cops. This is how twisted their thinking is. Keep listening. Get them armed. Who's never treated with you with respect, you can panic. The reason you don't panic, if you're of saying, course oh, you can panic, but guess who also panics when you resist arrest? The cops. So you have to, if you're going to justify the actions of Dante Wright this way, you also have to justify the actions of, of the cops. If you're saying, look, Dante Wright, he panicked. This is why he did this. Well, you know what? It's not exactly easy on the other side of the coin either. If you're a police officer and you have someone resisting arrest, you don't know if they're going to grab a gun. You don't know if they're going to grab a knife. You don't know. And so there's a level of panic there too. Why aren't you applying the same standards, Van Jones? You know why? Because you're a race-baiting, cop-hating communist. That's what you are. I understand it. It's because when you're given respect, you're given trust, you're shown respect, you're shown trust, so you, all you see is a badge. How are you doing, sir? But if you've been treated the whole time with no respect and no trust, when you see that person coming in, you're looking at the weapons. And in this case, yeah, the, so you've got somebody okay. who is panicking, and then, the, as you've been saying all night, the trained, professional, 26 years on the force, had been on the force six years when the young man was born, somehow panics and does the wrong thing. All right, here's Van Jones' cut two. We'll get through it. We have, audio, uh, we have other uh, audio to get to after Van Jones, but this is probably the worst of it. Here's cut two. Well, I just think, think the people uh, have a completely unfair standard uh, on both sides. Uh, police are considered to be superhuman and saints and as opposed to just city employees that some do bad stuff and some do good stuff. No, they're saints. They're superheroes. We have to believe everything they say. And then uh, a young black kid is presumptively. That, that's not, a, that's so not true. Again, stop speaking for all Americans. You speak for yourself. I'll speak for myself. I, I don't think it's fair to say that all cops are, are viewed as saints and as as uh, as heroes, of course, we acknowledge that there are some bad apples. What I will say and what I have always said is that, yes, as a whole, cops, they might not be saints, they're flawed, they're imperfect, but they do a tremendous amount of good. You can't deny that. They do an enormous amount of good. And then what else, Van Jones? Please continue. Subhuman, and anything that he does is, is dangerous. Anything that uh, he or she uh, says is, is talking back if it's not just yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am. And so you have this completely unfair double standard. But there's a deeper problem, yes, tell which us. is that the policing 
uh, 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 methodology that we have in the country right now is both dumb and dangerous and discriminatory. It's it not. It is dumb. It's actually not. It's not discriminatory. I'm going to get to some facts in a little bit that prove what you're saying is a damn lie. It's not discriminatory. It's not dumb and stupid. Boy, you sound real intelligent there, Van Jones. How how can you argue that our system of policing is dumb? We have, I, I would say we have the best policing system in the world. I mean, you, you look at some of these scenarios. If cops, for example, are chasing down somebody and in the pursuit, let's say, let's say it's a car chase and the person fleeing crashes his car. The police don't immediately jump on them and, and, you know, put their knees on their necks. No, they call an ambulance and get that person medical care. That's just one example. But that, that's our police force. That, that, is, that, that goes to show that our policing system is actually extremely fair. Extremely fair. Extremely generous. I'm not going to let uh, sit here and let you, Van Jones, tell me anything but that. All right, let's move on here. Another idiot on MSNBC, Jason Johnson, saying that we need to abolish American policing as it currently exists. Listen. I've been saying we need to abolish American policing as it currently exists. Why? It doesn't work. Yes, it does. And, and we don't seem to have this sort of difficulty when we're talking about any other government agency. So, Nicole, you know, I, I, I teach my class of Morgan State students before this. We were having this discussion with a bunch of 19 and 20 year olds. And I pointed out to them, I said, what's the graduation rate for high school kids in Baltimore? And the Baltimore graduation rate is only about 80 percent. People are always screaming, oh, my gosh, Baltimore public schools are terrible. They need to be taken over by the state. They need to be taken over by the government. Only 80 percent of these kids that. graduate. You know, the average homicides that are actually solved by police departments, only about 35 percent. You know, the number of rapes and sexual assaults that are solved by police departments, you know, less than 60 percent. I mean, you could hear the hate in his voice, can't you? I don't put up with this. I don't put up with this, ladies and gentlemen. This hatred for our police, this hatred for the men and women in blue who put their lives on the line to keep us safe. They don't have to do it. They could have chosen any other career. But they choose each and every day to put on a uniform, put a gun at their hip, and go protect innocent people. And I can't take it when these liberals trash the cops. It's a disgrace. Well, you know, they only solve this many homicides. They only prevent this many rapes. Only this, only that. It's just, it's unbelievable to me. It's unbelievable to me. You know the percentage likelihood of being shot unarmed as a black person? Yeah, life? you know the percentage chance of me stopping the audio right now because I don't want to listen to another damn second of you, Jason Johnson? 110%. What do you think of that? Ben and Jerry's, ladies and gentlemen, they're out there saying that the police shooting of Dante Wright is rooted in white supremacy. Ben and Jerry is known for their... Uh, their socialist views on, on many different things. Their far left radical views. The murder of Dante Wright is rooted in white supremacy and results from in, intentional criminalization of black and brown communities. The famed ice cream brand wrote, concluding the, sim, uh, the system can't be reformed. They wrote this on Twitter. It must be dismantled and a real system of public safety rebuilt from the ground up. Is Ben and Jerry's. Can you believe it? I never liked their damn ice cream anyway. It must be rebuilt from the ground up. Yeah. How would you rebuild the... I would love to see the framework that the liberals come up with for rebuilding the police force. I'd love to see it. I would love to see it. It would be a disaster. Then we have this idiot. Democrat Representative Rashida Tlaib calls for no more policing and incarceration. She took to Twitter and wrote this. It wasn't an accident. This is a Democrat representative. Congresswoman. 
It wasn't an accident. Policing in our country is inherently and intentionally racist. So she is accusing Kim Potter here, that that 26-year uh, veteran who, who killed Dante Wright, accusing her of not accidentally pulling a firearm, but intentionally pulling a firearm and killing him. Why would you do that? Because she's racist? Because she she just hates minorities that much that she came up with this elaborate scheme that, hey, you know what I'm going to do? I can't stand this guy. I'm going to pull out my firearm and discharge it and kill him. But I'm going to say I meant to draw my taser. Yeah, that's what I'll do because I'm a racist. This is the logic, folks. This is what we have to deal with. And this woman is a congresswoman. Dante Wright, she continues on Twitter, was met with aggression and violence. I am done with those who condone government-funded murder. No more policing, incarceration, and militarization. It can't be reformed. Do they, do they even understand what they're saying? Do they even comprehend the, like, the, the implications of that? The, the consequences? No more policing? Do you know what our country would look like without the police? I've got plenty more on this, folks. I'm going to take a break, and then we're going to come back and look at some facts. We're going to look at the evidence, and then we're going to get into uh, the rioting and looting that's taking place and respond to that. Don't go anywhere. Back in a minute. This is the Jason Veely Program. Conservatives, how many times have you been called a racist by someone on the left? What about sexist, bigoted, homophobic, xenophobic, right-wing, radical extremist? These are all buzzwords that liberals use as a means of labeling conservatives as something that they're not. And let me tell you something, I, like most of you, am getting pretty damn sick of it. That's why I started my own conservative comedy series, Living with a Liberal. Hosted on the popular video sharing app TikTok, Living with a Liberal features two fictional characters, played by yours truly, whose political differences could not be more obvious. It's a comedic take on the modern-day liberal Democrat, because if they can brand us as racists and bigots, we can brand them as triggered, oversensitive snowflakes. Check out Living with a Liberal today on TikTok. Just search Jason Veely and you'll be taken right to my homepage. I have over 100 episodes on there, so you won't be short on content anytime soon. Enjoy. Are you a pissed off liberal that wants to give me a piece of your mind? Or maybe you're a conservative that simply has a question or comment. Either way, you should know that there's a few different ways you can reach me. Feel free to send me an email at thejasonveleyprogram at gmail.com. Or if you prefer, you can also call the show number and leave me a voicemail. 860-266-2852. Be sure to provide your name and where you're writing or calling from. Thanks a lot. I look forward to hearing from you. So the police are racist. There's systemic racism in the police force. We need to dismantle the police, they say. No more policing, no more incarceration. You know what? Let's look at the facts. There was a study conducted by researchers at Washington State University. And you know what this study found? Liberals, cover up your ears because if you hear this, it might make your heads explode. It does not go with your narrative. This study found that police are actually less likely to shoot unarmed black suspects than unarmed whites or Hispanics. So unarmed whites or Hispanics, according to this study are more likely to be shot by police than unarmed blacks. That That's a fact. That's a fact. So tell me again how the police are out to get black people in this country. Tell me again, liberals. What do you think of this? Rashida, whatever your last name is, to what is it? To Lee? Whatever. 
What do you think of this, Ben and Jerry's? Van Jones, what do you think? That is a an undisputable fact. Roland Fryer, a professor at Harvard University, he conducted a study, and he found that there is zero evidence of racial bias in police shootings. He looked at hundreds upon hundreds of incidents of uh, police shootings across the country, and he found zero evidence of racial bias. None. Looking at Houston in particular, he found that blacks are 24% less likely than whites to be shot by officers. So again, kind of complementing the study conducted by researchers at Washington State University. That's a fact. What do you think, Van Jones, huh? What do you think, Jason Johnson? All you other liberal nitwits out there, you race baiters. A police officer is 18.5 times more likely to be killed by a black male than an unarmed black male is to be killed by an officer. So that puts things into context, huh? Police, you don't even consider how many police are being killed in the line of duty. They don't even pay attention to that. Why not? Why not? If, if our goal is to stop senseless murders, stop violence, or at least you can't ever fully stop it, so at least minimize it, shouldn't we look at not only how many victims are killed by cops, but also how many cops are killed by victims, quote-unquote? There's far more cops killed. That's a fact. That's a fact. And it can go on and on and on. There, there's been study after study done that all points to the idea that this charge of systemic racism in our police force is, is fairy tales. It's, it's not true. It's fantasy. But what happens, ladies and gentlemen, is because of the power of the mainstream media, because of how much influence they have over how so many of us think, how so many of us, um, you know, live day to day, what we believe and so forth. This is what happens. We believe, yes, there's systemic racism in the police force. Why do you believe that? Well, because Van Jones is sitting in a CNN newsroom and he says so. Oh, okay. Did you look at any of the facts, any studies done? No, no, not really. No, I haven't. Well, there you go. But liberals, they continue on, don't they? They continue pushing this narrative, and they're never going to stop. They're never going to stop. What they're doing is they're pouring fuel on the fire. Aren't they? They're not looking for solutions. They're not looking... I mean, dismantling the police, that's not a solution. That's not a solution. Barack Obama was out there. Um, over the past couple of days, saying we need to reimagine, that's his word, reimagine policing in this country. Well, I don't want to reimagine a damn thing. We deal with the bad apples as they come. We deal with the bad apples as they come. But as a whole, there's nothing wrong with our police force. I would argue that there's a a problem with the way we treat and view police in this country. I would argue that we have a liberal problem, a progressive problem, where liberals are, again, pouring fuel on the fire, causing more tension, more divisiveness between the police and communities of color. It's the liberals doing this. That's, that's the problem that needs to be addressed. So now we have Minneapolis and, uh, and other uh uh, cities like Portland, Oregon, rioting, looting, burning. That's what's going on. Tuesday night, 60 rioters arrested in Minneapolis 
and the previous night, Monday night, 53 others. So dozens upon dozens of people being arrested. And let me just say, thank God for those police officers. Thank God for those police officers doing their absolute best to restore some sense of normality to these cities that are just engulfed in flames. They're having bricks thrown at them, these police officers. Bricks being thrown at them, bottles being thrown at them, other garbage being thrown at them. Completely disrespected. Completely disrespected. Because the mantra now is, all cops are bad. A-C-A-B. They spray paint everywhere now. That's what we're supposed to believe. All cops are bad. All cops are racist. And all cops, therefore, deserve to have bricks thrown at them. Do you liberals, by the way, condone this? Do you condone it? Joe Biden, you're going to call out Black Lives Matter and Antifa? Probably not. Probably not. You went out there a couple days ago and made an incredibly weak statement saying, I don't want to see any rioting. Okay, well, now it's happening, so what are you going to do about it? You're going to call him out again? You're going to tell them off? No, you're not. No, you're not. In Portland, Antifa rioters recently set fire to uh, the police union building. You going to say anything about that, Joe Biden? Folks, here's the problem. Joe Biden and other Democrat leaders... They never offer any support for the police, do they? In other words, look, Joe Biden, as I just said, went out and said, you know, I don't want to see any rioting. Okay, great. Now rioting and looting is happening. So are you going to A, condone that or, or uh, um, uh, condemn that? There's the word. You're going to condemn that. And B, are you going to stand with the police? Are you going to thank the police for for doing what they do, for standing up against this? Any encouragement for our men and women in blue at all from you, Joe Biden? Probably not. I want to make something clear. You rioters out there, if you're out there in the streets, rioting, looting, flipping over cars, breaking through business windows, you people are the scum of the earth. You people are the scum of the earth. I know you're ticked off. I know you're ticked off, but you know what? This is, this is in no way justifiable. If you want to protest peacefully, go for it. That's a right you have outlined in the Constitution. But for those of you lighting things on fire, destroying businesses, lives of innocent Americans, you should be ashamed of yourselves. You people are the scum of the earth. You're the scum of the earth. There was a uh, there was a good article that I found in uh, a website that I actually had never heard of before. Maybe you guys have the Liberty Loft. It's a Liberty the Liberty Loft dot com. Um, I found this uh, just kind of doing doing research. Um, it's an article about Black Lives Matter. And it's entitled, The Worst Thing to Impact Black Americans in Decades is Black Lives Matter. And I started reading some of it, and it actually sounded pretty good. It was, um, it was, some, there were some very, very good, compelling points made. Very, very well written. Written by someone named S. Bennett McKinley. TheLibertyLoft.com. Let me read you a little bit of this. Because it's, it's compelling makes a good argument. Black Lives Matter, Inc. is a racist entity that has existed since Obama was president and insurrectionists were setting fire to Baltimore. Its impact on the country, however, has been unwantingly uh, felt the past nine to ten months. George Floyd's death was one of the biggest fundraising times for BLM as hundreds of millions of dollars poured into into the national organization's accounts. It still isn't known where BLM Inc.'s headquarters are located. 
what began as a hashtag in response to the acquittal of George Zimmerman in the 2020 uh, the, in the 2012 shooting of Trayvon Martin, BLM amassed more than 90 million dollars last year. The self-proclaimed win for social justice should prompt every black American to seriously analyze whether this racist and Marxist organization has done anything but make their lives worse. So this is going out to you BLM supporters. For instance, he writes, or she, I'm not quite sure if this is a he or she. Again, it's S. Bennett McKinley who wrote this article. They write, for instance, as local chapters were left out to dry, the national founder of BLM purchased a new $1.4 million home in uh, California. This exclusive Los Angeles neighborhood where approximately 88% of the residents are white. After the sale of the property was made public, critics took the social media to blast the founder of BLM. A new $1.4 million home in this very white neighborhood in Los Angeles. Now, if white people will, if if white people are so bad and so racist and so oppressive, why would the founder of BLM purchase a $1.4 million home here? It's uh, by the way, Topanga Ca- uh, Canyon, California. That's the name of the neighborhood. Why? If white people were as bad as they tell us they are, why would you want to be surrounded by them? Anyone who supports BLM, can you explain this? And by the way, when I when I say BLM, at least in this segment right now, I'm talking about the uh, BLM Inc., the institutional Black Lives Matter. I'm not talking about the, the rallying cry. Of course, black lives do matter. Of course, all lives do matter. But I'm talking about the the organization, Black Lives Matter. I don't support it. I support the idea, not the organization. And when I say I support the idea, I mean, yes, I support Black Lives Matter because I support the idea that all lives matter. But that's, uh, that's not something that you're supposed to say today. You're not supposed to say all lives matter because it's racist. The, author, the, uh, the article continues, doesn't that say something about these activists and how seriously they take their own movement? Talking about the $1.4 million home purchased recently by the BLM uh, founder. Lucrative book deals, expensive homes, professorships at prestigious universities, and media appearances are just some of the opportunities, quote-unquote, Activism for black people has afforded some. Meanwhile, the black community at large, specifically in Democrat-led cities, is suffering. Things are not getting better for them, and the data proves it. Notice that murder and overall crime rates have skyrocketed in America's major cities since BLM started pushing the defund the police mantra. Because they're not fearing the police anymore. They, They are rising up against the police, due in large part to uh, agendas pushed by far-left activists and uh, commentators. Sadly, this has done zilch for the black community in many of the country's poorest neighborhoods. In fact, opportunity zones created under the Trump administration have done more to help black Americans than BLM could put uh, into motion. The creation of these opportunity zones have made it easier for investors to take advantage of tax breaks. However, the policies have been aimed at putting people into job-creating programs in an effort to get the poorest Americans out of entitlement programs and into self-sufficiency. So all you liberals out there who say that Donald Trump did nothing for black people and minorities, you're dead wrong. There's a perfect example. Did a hell of a lot more than BLM has done. I'll tell you that much. A little bit more here. Minneapolis is an extraordinarily relevant example where clips of insurrection and looting took place there after the shooting of Dante Wright. What happened in this situation is terribly sad. Further, it appears to have been an accident. As a result, BLM Inc. immediately organized protests, quote-unquote, 
that de that developed into insurrectionist violence and destruction before a single fact was learned. Mm-hmm. They didn't know a damn thing about it. And yet their immediate response was to go out and smash things. The only questions that needed to be asked were what is the color of the person shot and what's the ethnicity of the finger that pulled the trigger? Right, exactly. That's all they cared about. That's all they cared about. That was good enough for them. Race has had nothing to do with this incident, the author writes. So what exactly is the point? How is this benefiting the black community in that area? As a result of last summer and the past 48 hours, longer than 48 hours now, uh, Minneapolis has seen a 250% rise in gunshot victims. And it goes on. If you want to read the whole article, I encourage you to do so. TheLibertyLoft.com the worst thing to impact black Americans in decades is BLM Inc. Very compelling, huh? Very compelling. Uh, and it's absolutely true. It's absolutely true. You know, you people, you rioters, looters, you are your own worst enemies. I hate to tell you, but you are. In addition to being the scum of the earth, you're your own worst enemies. Because if you actually want people to take you seriously, if you want people to listen to you, this is not how you do it. Because each and every time you throw a brick at the cops, or you flip over a car, or you smash a window, all that is overshadowing what you're trying to say. What your message is. If you actually believe that there's systemic racism in the police force, fine, let's have a conversation about it. I fundamentally disagree with the charge, but if you want to talk about it, let's talk about it. But again, the second you go out there and start lighting things on fire, burning down buildings, setting fire to the police union stations, your credibility is lost. You are doing a tremendous amount of harm to your own... <laughs> You're doing a tremendous amount of harm to your own... Movement. Not sure what happened there. Got a little tongue-tied. I think that's the signal that it's time for a commercial break. <laughs> Don't go anywhere, folks. I'll be back in a minute to talk about something that's going on right now with the Supreme Court. Real important stuff. Stick with me. Conservatives. How many times have you been called a racist by someone on the left? What about sexist, bigoted, homophobic, xenophobic, right-wing radical extremist? These are all buzzwords that liberals use as a means of labeling conservatives as something that they're not. And let me tell you something, I, like most of you, am getting pretty damn sick of it. That's why I started my own conservative comedy series, Living with a Liberal. Hosted on the popular video sharing app TikTok, Living with a Liberal features two fictional characters, played by yours truly, whose political differences could not be more obvious. It's a comedic take on the modern-day Liberal Democrat, because if they can brand us as racists and bigots, we can brand them as triggered, oversensitive snowflakes. Check out Living with a Liberal today on TikTok. Just search Jason Veely and you'll be taken right to my homepage. I have over a hundred episodes on there, so you won't be short on content anytime soon. Enjoy. Are you a pissed off liberal that wants to give me a piece of your mind? Or maybe you're a conservative that simply has a question or comment. Either way, you should know that there's a few different ways you can reach me. Feel free to send me an email at thejasonveelyprogram at gmail.com. Or if you prefer, you can also call the show number and leave me a voicemail. 860-266-2852. Be sure to provide your name and where you're writing or calling from. Thanks a lot. I look forward to hearing from you. 
Mike and Crystal. Hey Mike, have you heard of the Jimmy Z Show? Yeah Crystal, the Jimmy Z Show is awesome. Which topic do you like most? I like them all. They are all lots of fun. Do you have a favorite? I just like Jimmy Z. His voice is so hot. Okay, but what about his politics? What politics? The politics he talks about on the Jimmy Z Show. I never noticed any politics. All I hear is the velvety smooth dulcet tone of Jimmy Z's sizzling, sexy, scintillating voice. Holy mackerel. The Jimmy Z Show. The Jimmy Z Show is available on Facebook, Twitter, Spotify, and iTunes. I'm Donald J. Trump, and I approve this message. All right, listen to this one before I get on to the Supreme Court. Nancy Pelosi... Uh, in an interview with uh, USA Today, um, said that she would have taken on the uh, the uh, January sixth mob at the Capitol building. She would have she would have fought him because she's a street fighter. She said. <laughs> oh, it's just it's it's you know, folks. All I have in my notes on this one is just. L O L. That's it. That's all I needed. More than three months after the the incursion into the Capitol, Democratic House Speaker Nancy Pelosi insisted that she was ready to fight the crowds that streamed into the Capitol on January sixth. Reading now from the Western Journal, Pelosi said that the mob's intent was to kill her, according to USA Today. Well, I don't know about that. Uh, that's what they were setting out to do, she told the outlet in an interview conducted on the Speaker's 100th day in the 117th Congress. When asked by USA Today if she was scared, Pelosi replied, Well, I'm pretty tough. I'm a street fighter. They would have had a battle on their hands. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, I just I have a mental image in my head of Nancy Pelosi trying to fight anybody uh, and it not not going too well. She's a street fighter? Are you kidding me? She's, what, 80-something years old? How old is she? I'm, I mean, just, uh, anyway. There's a laugh for you. All right, let's get into this. A few minutes left. According to Breitbart, uh, in multiple reports, Democrats to unveil court-packing bill that expands the Supreme Court to 13. From 9 to 13. Now, we knew this was coming. Joe Biden, out on the campaign trail multiple times, said, I'm not going to answer that question about packing the Supreme Court. No, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. And I said at the time, uh, he's not answering because he absolutely intends on packing the Supreme Court. And here we are. Democrats will reportedly unveil a bill Thursday, today, to pack the Supreme Court by expanding the number of justices from 9 to 13 with the four new vacancies to be filled immediately by President Joe Biden and the Democrat-controlled Senate. The proposal comes less than a week after President Biden signed an executive order creating a commission to study the question of whether the Supreme Court should be expanded. The commission is headed by partisan Democrats. Well, no surprise there. (laughs) Well, gee, should the Supreme Court be expanded? Let's see. Let's let's, uh, try to investigate and come to a real answer here. And by the way, all the people that are going to try to come up with an answer, I want them all to be Democrats. Yeah, all these Democrats look into whether or not we need to expand the Supreme Court. Unity, right? We need to come together, don't you know? However, left-wing Democrats warned that the commission could be used to thwart their desired changes rather than advancing them. I doubt that'll happen. Um, so that's what's going on. Expanding the, Supre- expanding the Supreme Court to 13 justices would give liberal justices a nominal 7 to 6 majority. Congress can set the size of the Supreme Court without a constitutional amendment, which I don't agree with. I think that it should be extremely difficult to expand the Supreme Court, if not impossible, honestly. Though the last president who tried to pack the Supreme Court, FDR, was opposed by his own party. 
His effort is viewed by historians as a crude power grab, but one that ultimately convinced the court to stop striking down his New Deal legislation and to allow government powers to grow. So this hasn't been tried since FDR, and here Joe Biden is trying it again. He wants 13 justices on the Supreme Court, all of which will be nominated by him and confirmed by the liberals in the Senate, giving the liberals in the Supreme Court a 7-6 to six majority. We knew it was coming, huh? You know, what is it with liberals? Can't you guys... Liberals, ladies and gentlemen, honestly, this is the best way I know how to, how to phrase it. They're like children. They're like children. They don't get their way. And instead of acting in a mature fashion, instead of, you know, carrying themselves with dignity, they throw themselves onto the ground and stomp and cry and throw a hissy fit until they get their way. Democrats were out there when Donald Trump was in office um, doing his constitutional duty to fill vacancies on the Supreme Court. Remember that? He filled, uh, I think it was three, right? Didn't he fill three Supreme Court seats? Or was it two? Something like that. But um, I think it was three. But liberals were out there at the time saying that Donald Trump was packing the Supreme Court, even though he was carrying out his constitutional duties. They were criticizing him for packing the Supreme Court. So now my question is, those same liberals who are criticizing Donald Trump, are you going to criticize Joe Biden for actually packing the Supreme Court? For trying to increase the number to 13 instead of 9, which hasn't been attempted since FDR? You liberals going to have a problem with this? Probably not. Probably not. Because you're one-sided, left-wing hacks uh, who don't care about being hypocritical. You don't care. What you want is power. What you want is control. What you, what you want is dominance over anyone in this country who does not conform to your, to your communist agenda. That's what you want. And so you're going to pack the courts. You call Trump a, a uh, you know, you criticize him for quote-unquote packing the court, and now here you guys are doing the same damn thing. In, in fact, actually, you're not doing the same thing. You're doing something much worse. Trump was doing his constitutional, uh, re- constitutionally required duties. You liberals are just, you know, engaged in a power grab here. That's all this is. So we'll talk more about this, folks, as more information comes out. Um, and I'll, you know, I'll spend some more time on it. As is necessary. But I just thought that was incredible. Incredible. This is one of the most radical administrations in history, folks. I'm telling you, it is. All right. Hope you have a great weekend. I'll be back on Tuesday. God bless. God save this great nation.